Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be doing this clip's going to be all about tape. Now tape's useful stuff because it's really unless you're a dab hand and you're a sign writer and you have got great discipline and it's really 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 hard to get a nice clean edge say from one color to another or one tone to another and I've got some examples here where someone has used tape but there's been a problem and it's called bleeding no one likes to bleed at the wrong time do they now this was obviously on a pale blue duck egg blue base great color and then the oranges and the warm colors were put on later the main problem comes about with the first color which was the orange and you can see that there's a red a darker orange underneath this bright vermilion it's a red really and it's bled through the tape I suspect because the paint was a little thin and also you can see the whole painting is strong horizontal brush strokes and these are supposed to cut through in a vertical way uh, as contrast and being an opposite color lovely color combinations this has great potential this painting but it's kind of been spoiled because of that bleeding here's an example a lot of students and painters like to leave a little bit of a white band around the outside edge to their painting again this is another super painting but can you see along the edge there's a bit of a whoopsie there it's overbled a little bit of a a lump there that's come through and just generally there's just the odd little termination point of the brush stroke where it's slid under the tape and it's there forever now what I've got here this is just a little cheapy now I've already rushed or raced around the outside edge here with some white but being white on white you can't see it how brilliant is that so I'll do the last one with blue tape it's the same stuff it's called painters mates or something like that it's designed for the purpose but when you're a house painter sometimes you use it just to sort of make it easier not having to cut into a corner or if there's a contrasting wall artists like to use it a lot and I think compared to the old masking tape that I grew up with I think this stuff feels a bit more flexible so I think they've changed the formula and made it uh, so that it can um, stick down firmly now obviously canvas is a texture thing there are little pinholes running along it and so you really need to burnish that down with your thumbnail so really really get it down this is gesso okay you can use semi-gloss acrylic paint so long as it's fairly thick all you do is just grab some of this put it down and then just brush now I'm re-gessoing but first of all I've got to attend that edge it's more important to just get the edge right this is so not the right brush for this job am I happy about that yes I'm happy it's a lovely day today so what you do is you just make sure that this same base color slides in under the tape if it does now if I've painted it properly there might be no difference but if by any chance what's happening is the base color is being repeated under here any paint that's going to get in under that tape is base color so when you paint over the top of it there won't be any contrasting bleeds does that make sense I'm going to show you the same trick on a painting with oils shortly and we'll just see how that goes oil paint is fairly viscous stuff in previous clips I've shown you how that can really it's it's slow to move once it's on the once it's on the canvas it doesn't want to go anywhere it peaks up and stays there whereas acrylic tends to flow can I ask a question yes my question is if you are doing this this part so you've taped and now you're painting on top with the same color as the base color of your canvas yes do you need to repaint the whole canvas like you've just done or can you just do along the tape line oh absolutely I'm going to show you that shortly in the other oil 
The only reason I painted the whole thing here was because, as I was saying, this is not an expensive brand and it's not a really good gesso finish. So I was killing two birds with one stone there. One, I wanted to make sure that if any bleed happens, it'll be white and you won't see it. The other was just to make it, uh, give it a better surface to paint on for some lucky person who wants to use this later. What's going to happen is if I say I go in here with a bright blue sky or something like that or uh, whatever I choose to do, it can't bleed in under the tape because there's already white there and that's what you'll end up, you get a nice crisp edge. Where it's oil paint through the middle, that wasn't such a problem here because that's obviously been taped there. That's a really nice, that's quite a nice smooth taping job. Often it's easier once there's lots of paint and it's all going in the same direction, that's not so hard. And often students at the school often use it. I do. I use it if I need a dead straight line. I'm not going to sort of access the sign writer within. I'm just going to use some tape. It's what it's there for. There's some examples here. I've got a couple of these simple still lives and Tony's just gone over them and played with them because there's somebody else, it's a student who has doesn't um, come anymore. So he just tapes them up and plays with them on top uh, just to show students that there's more than one way to go about painting a subject like that. With that tape you can see it's really quite accurate. Why is it so? I can tell by the brush strokes. He's come in off the tape into the painting, off the tape into the painting. So by doing that, painting from the tape into the painting, instead of into the painting across the tape, you're forcing the paint under the tape. So you're going to get a bleed. I'll show you now with an oil painting how to do a similar thing within a painting. 